The wild boar is perhaps the most iconic food source in Age of Empires, particularly earning its fame from killing villagers, being lamed and spoiling itself if killed the wrong way. But Age of Empires 4 significantly changes this formula. Welcome to Age of Noob everyone, and let's talk about that. Alright, many previous Age of Empires 2 players, like myself, initially assumed that the boar worked the same way. Go with one villager, hit it once, and lure it back to the TC. But that's not how it turned out to be. That said, we're getting ahead of ourselves, so let's go through each change one by one to fully understand the full scope of changes to this magnificent beast. Number 1. The Boar Stats before we dive into the analysis, let's quickly go through the boar stats in Age of Empires 4. This beefy boy is all of 150 HP, which is double the HP of AoE2's boar at 75. Furthermore, the boar in AoE4 has 4 melee and pierce armor each, whereas the boar in Age of Empires 2 has none. It has 15 attack compared to Age of Empires 2's only 7, and the biggest one yet, it has a whopping 2000 food up from 340 from AoE2. You might think this is broken at first glance, but wait for the upcoming points first. Number 2. Boar Damage vs Villager HP Just like in Age of Empires 2, the boar is a dangerous beast that could kill your units if you're not careful. Villagers start with 50 HP in Age of Empires 4, and the boar deals a whopping 15 damage per hit as mentioned before. This means that your villagers will die after the 4th hit. Although villagers start with only 25 HP in AoE 2, the boar does less damage to them per hit, so they also die in 4 hits. Of course, if you spend 50 gold to research Loom, the villager HP doubles to 50, and the villagers can tank 3 more hits and die on the 7th boar attack. In Age of Empires 4, the Loom equivalent technology in the town center is textiles. However, there are two things to note here. One, the technology is much more expensive at 50 food and 100 gold. It also takes longer to research as well. Hence, at its current balance, it really isn't advisable even for less experienced players to pick up this technology before going for the boar. Loom made sense for low elo players in AoE 2 to not lose villagers to boar lures, but textiles really isn't for Age of Empires 4. We still don't know what the ideal time it is to pick up textiles to help against enemy raids, but we do know that it really won't matter too much against boars. Number 3. The Age of Collection in Age of Empires 2, you need to get both of your boars for food in the Dark Age, 99% of the time regardless of what sieve you are and what build order you're following. You simply fall behind your opponent otherwise if you have to farm earlier. In Age of Empires 4, boars are clearly not designed for the Dark Age. Not only do they spawn much further from the starting TC, villagers are simply too weak to harvest food from it that early on. Maybe a new civilization or some really wacky cheese strategy might make sense for an earlier boar harvest, but in regular games you simply have to invest way too much when you can simply gather food from the plethora of sheep available at the start of the game. This is especially compounded by the Professional Scouts technology. I'm going to go over the upgrades in just a bit, but Professional Scouts is a feudal age upgrade that will help you not only kill the boar with the help of your scout, but also carry it to a nearby drop off point. It is very cheap technology to pick up and it's fairly quick at 45 seconds. Hence, the developers have clearly designed the boar to be killed and harvested from primarily the feudal age onward, and maybe perhaps the castle age if nobody has touched them yet. Remember, they carry 2000 food, so it's no joke. Number 4. Villagers required to kill the boar In Age of Empires 2, you need 25 arrows to kill a boar. This means that a group of 5 or 6 villagers can comfortably bring down a boar, with one kiting and the others shooting it down regularly with roughly 5 volleys. In Age of Empires 4, villagers have 6 base attack, but since the boars have 4 pierce armor, they only do 2 damage to it. Scouts have an even lower base attack, so they only do 1 damage. And given that the boar's HP is 150, it takes a whopping 75 arrows to bring down the boar, exactly 3 times as much in Age of Empires 2. This is where most of the players messed up thinking that 5 or 6 villagers should be enough. Quick pause, Age of Noob from the future here. While the last statement that I recorded yesterday was technically true, it was because folks weren't aware of how much damage the boar did, and that the villagers could go melee against the boar. When villagers are within melee range, they use their spear and double their damage to 12. The original way of thinking was that, I'll just kite with one villager and the others will hit with arrows just like in Age of Empires 2. This is wrong. 
Make sure all of your villagers are within melee range once you hit the bar with the initial volley of arrows, and kite around your other villagers so they can hit within the melee range. If you're new to the game or bad at micro, then you should commit 8-9 to nine villagers to bring it down safely without losing a single villager. If you're comfortable with micro, then simply move around with your weak villager while the others stab it with their spears. Hence, you could theoretically go as few as 4 or 5 villagers to bring down the boar if you really pay close attention. Now, keep in mind that the final release of the game might tweak the stats of the boar to make it easier or harder to bring down, so the info is accurate as of the technical stress test. This also means that my previous point of villagers being too weak in the Dark Age is also not entirely true. However, most would still agree that it's not worth the hassle to get the boar with all the sheep around for efficiency reasons. Again, this might change in future patches and different metas. If there are any significant changes in the future based on what I've mentioned, I'll be sure to let you folks know. Alright, with that said, let's head back right into the video. Number 5. The boar is unlurable and therefore unlameable. As alluded before, many people tried to lure but failed. There seems to be a specific number of tiles the boar is allowed to be aggressive towards its aggressors, but returns back to its original location no matter what you do. You can act like a smartass here and show off your 9000 APM by continuously attacking and kiting literally 150 times with your scout to kill it, but you'd be wrong again. As our next point, number 6, the boar regenerates HP. The moment the boar de-aggroes against your units and begins going back to its location, it'll regenerate all of the HP that it lost. Heck, I tried to re-aggro it again and hitting it with multiple arrows, only to find out that it'll adamantly go back to its starting location with a full HP of 150. Don't even try this folks, it does not work. Number 7. And this sparked a bit of discussion in the community, but there's no decay in the game. Whether you like this decision or not, this changes a lot on how gathering food works here and the strategies you can implement. Hence, you don't have to overcommit to huntables with villagers due to decay anymore. When you kill a boar, it'll remain at 2000 food until the end of the game or a villager begins collecting its food. Number 8. And this ties well to the previous point, but it no longer matters how the boar dies. In Age of Empires 2, only villagers could deal the final blow to the boar in order for us to collect its food. In Age of Empires 4, this is no longer the case. Hence, military units can kill a boar on their way to the enemy and leave it there to be later collected by either villagers or a scout carrying the carcass back to the base with professional scouts researched. This also proves the previous point of the boars being unlameable. You might have thought, hey, I could just kill the boars from afar and lame them like we did in Age of Empires 2, but neither the food will go away nor the food will rot. Ironically, you'd essentially be doing your opponents a favor. Number 9. Niche Laming Mechanics I know I said that the boar is unlameable due to the lack of luring, rotting, or food disappearing, but there is one niche way. You can, in theory, kill the boar and have your scouts carry it back to your base with professional scouts researched. This is the only way to truly lame your opponent, but it's very niche and it's not game changing as it used to be in Age of Empires 2 and that's a good thing. It'll take quite a bit of resources, attention, and a bit of luck to lame your opponent's boar, and I'm not quite sure if it's worth it. Only time will tell whether it'll be a part of the core gameplay, and the devs might tweak that based on what they see. One very important thing to also note is the Roos. This might sound funny, but the Roos have a bounty system specifically designed for laming animals. They get 5 gold per sheep killed, 10 per deer, 25 per wolf, and a whopping 75 gold per boar killed. It's no surprise that the bounty for the boar is so high, given how difficult they are to kill. But this mechanic exists, so be careful when you play especially against the Roos. Number 10. Gather Rate Technologies There are a lot of technologies in Age of Empires 4 that affect the gather rates overall, but also for boars as well. Starting off in the Dark Age, you can research survival techniques. It is fairly expensive at 50 wood and 100 gold and takes 75 seconds to research, but it has a large impact on gathering as villagers carry 15 more food and collect 10% faster. Unlike Age of Empires 2, villagers can only carry 10 food if they're unupgraded, so survival techniques is a big deal. You can also pick up wheelbarrow as well for further efficiency in the Dark Age, but there's a lot of discussion right now in the forums that it's really not worth it to pick it up in the Dark Age. Once again, the pros will probably give us a much better idea once the meta establishes on when to pick up the wheelbarrow. Remember, you can get wheelbarrow in the mill so you don't have to give up on villager production like in Age of Empires 2. In the Feudal Age, you can pick up Professional Scouts, which doesn't affect the villagers but helps with the boar mechanics as previously discussed. 
Finally, horticulture, fertilization, and precise crossbreeding all give the same 15% additional food gather rate. Realistically speaking though, you'll probably only pick up survival techniques. Depending on the build order, you may also opt to get either or both Wheelbarrow and Professional Scouts as well. The other technologies are simply too far out and gear more towards farming in the mid to late game. Number 11. Two civilizations in the game cannot gather food from the boar. They are the Abbasid Dynasty and the Delhi Sultanate. Because boars are forbidden to eat in Islam, it's pretty cool that the developers have implemented this mechanic in-game. This in-game disadvantage, however, is offset by economic advantages, such as cheaper villagers or faster gather rates from berries. And finally, number 12, various gathering methods. The typical way currently is to move out with around 10 villagers or so and kill the boar with the help of your scout. You can then move everyone back to the TC with the scout carrying the carcass with professional scouts. If you don't have professional scouts research, then most people either mill the boar or even TC it in some cases. Remember, it's 2000 food. Furthermore, the Mongols have a specific indirect bonus as well. The resource drop-off buildings are not specific, as they can only construct gurs. This means that they can move out with 10 or so villagers, kill the boar, construct a gur next to it, harvest all the food, and then relocate the gur to a nearby resource such as a woodline or other deer. This mechanic makes them very versatile and efficient. Hence, make sure you take advantage of this if you're playing as the Mongols. Well, that's all I could think of at this point, and I'm fairly certain that I've covered all of the important points for the boars in Age of Empires 4. Since I don't have access to the game, I couldn't get in-game footage for most of the things that I explained, but I tried my best to piece together everything on my own through numerous data sources and videos. Finally, be sure to tune in to tomorrow's short as there is a funny interaction I'll cover about the boars that occurred in the technical stress test. Thank you so much for watching and stopping by Age of Noob once more. If you'd like to see more Age of Empires 4 content, please consider to like and subscribe to not miss out on any Age of Empires 4 related content. As mentioned before, I will be making a few announcements in the upcoming two videos, so stay tuned. As always, thank you so much for your continued support and see you all in the next one.